Um, so welcome to the Kubernetes Policy Working Group session. Um, so we are a small working group. Uh, part of the motivation actually com uh, comes from the chief architect, uh, Brian Grant from Google. Um, so Brian Grant always envisioned a uh, policy framework uh, being one of the uh, like the 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 the, uh, the shapes of Kubernetes uh, in the future that Kubernetes tr should uh, transform to. Uh, so policy is always like a big thing on his mind. Um, from ourselves, uh, what we find uh, necessary to form a policy working group uh, is because that uh, you uh, basically you can find policy defined uh, in many places in Kubernetes. Uh, you have policy security policy, which is a big, a big one, and you have network policy, you have RBAC policy, you have many policy. But if you ask, just uh, uh, ask uh, uh, anyone, uh, what is Kubernetes policy? So I I, I doubt uh, anyone can give a concrete answer uh, to it. So. That's actually part of the problem that uh, policy is defined like scattered all all around the place. Um, and another thing is that policy description are domestic uh, in nature. Uh, we got uh, questions from people like, uh, "Are we going to define a single uh, policy description language through the working group?" Uh, the answer is probably no, uh, because uh, policy language is uh, very tricky and domain specific, so we uh, we don't think we can standardize that. But what uh, what what the working group is focusing on is uh, the policy semantics and the control mechanism. So these are things that is universal and could be st uh, standardized or generalized. So this is our focus. And also, policy is um, uh, policy is like uh, very important uh, in many other aspects uh, outside of Kubernetes. For example, this is the ONAP uh, policy project. And uh, if you have a similar background uh, like I did uh, with like writing a telco standard uh, 12 years ago. Uh, you know, policy plays a big part in the IMS. Uh, that was NGN standard, uh, like uh, a decade ago. Uh, so uh, policy is important, and policy is scattered around. So we want to form a working group uh, to try to come up with the architecture, uh, as I said, to have a standardized uh, control mechanism and uh, this is uh, what, the working, uh, what the purpose of the working group. This is the relationship with the different six. Um, as you can see, we uh, keep in touch with uh, many six, uh, like scheduling, uh, admission, storage, network, um, also uh, like multi-tenancy working group. Um, so. We uh, and also working group in Kubernetes by definition is <coughs> cross multiple six. Uh, okay, so we 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 all we always have a list of working items uh, for every half year. So this is the work items uh, we focus on for the first half of the year. Uh, probably we'll keep focusing on for the second half of this year. Um, so multi tenancy. Uh, gatekeeper uh, and post secure, uh, post security policy. These are the three uh, big items uh, we will be focusing on for the Kubernetes side. And we have also some new ideas, very uh, forward looking, uh, almost research items. Uh, if you are interested, uh, you are welcome to participate. Okay, so multi tenancy. <coughs> Multi multi tenancy has always been a big problem uh, for Kubernetes. There has been a lot uh, various mode promos uh, proposed by Google and other companies 
uh, uh, like hard multi tendency or soft multi tendency. Uh, so uh, I think the multi tendency working group currently uh, is running a proposal. Uh, basically, have a tenant CRD uh, to populate uh, the the tenancy uh, resource uh, uh, view tenant as a resource and populate the resource uh, via the CRD. So the policy, why do we need a policy here? The policy here is to help, uh, basically, uh, to tell the tenant CRD like where to stop. So the policy will describe what the limits a tenant will have and uh, help automate uh, the process of uh, populate the, the tenant. So um, uh, as you can see, the, these are the, like, uh, I, I pick it up from the design document uh, from the multi-tenancy. And uh, so in a nutshell, we, uh, by defining a policy, we help solving the uh, the, the 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 custom resource uh, population problem. Um, so a simple idea is something like we can utilize uh, the gatekeeper project, and uh, so ba uh, so basically we define a tenant uh, policy object. Uh, so in that uh, policy object, we described like what the policy should be applied to a certain uh, tenant, and then uh, the gatekeeper will help like mapping the uh, policy definition to the general Kubernetes uh, working mechanism. So uh, there's still problem like how do we define the constraint for a population? Uh, so the big, the biggest problem still is when do we hit the wall and stop? So this is still uh, like an interesting area for us to explore. Um, the second one is the gatekeeper project. So <coughs> for those of you uh, are not familiar with, uh, gatekeeper is a project uh, spearhead by um, Microsoft and other companies. Uh, uh, work with the open policy agent uh, project. So it's basically a policy CRD uh, uh, project. So uh, Gatekeeper uh, like helps define a way that you can use policy uh, to do like admission control and uh, uh, other stuff uh, in Kubernetes uh, through OPA, through OPA. Um, so Gatekeeper is, I think, a project uh, is very promising. Uh, they have made a lot of progress <coughs> and will uh, like keep working uh, very closely with the Gatekeeper project. And also, there will be some very interesting uh, planning for uh, OPA, like the WASM support. Uh, very interesting for us. Uh, another big a uh, big thing, the third item, is the post security policy migration. So there are discussions about actually uh, migrate the, po the security policy of the core Kubernetes mechanism uh, into a uh, like uh, all of tree uh, operation. So uh, Gatekeeper is actually uh, one of the choice uh, under consideration uh, by Sigoth and uh, uh, so we are also uh, work very closely with uh, Gatekeeper folks to see uh, if we can use Gatekeeper actually to do the post security policy. Uh, how do we do that? And I think this is one of the uh, one of the most interesting um, experiment we'll be conducting in the second half of this year. <coughs> so some new things. Um, the first new uh, experiment we're also running is the formal verification for policy. So formal verification is sort of not the type of thing you uh, usually thinking about uh, for cloud computing. It's usually done uh, uh, mostly in research. So you uh, have a way of formally uh, verify a uh, mechanism and identify many of the corner cases. Um, 
So uh, what we find uh, interesting for policy is that uh, we need a way to know how the policy is defined uh, correctly, and also when the policy is uh, enforced, executed, uh, whether it is like executed uh, correctly. Uh, so there comes the uh, proposal for the formal verification. So uh, I will spare you the details. Uh, if you are familiar with the first order logic, uh, you be familiar with the SMT solvers. Um, so, basically, this is what the formal verification is. So, there's a, um, we try to verify this uh, logic expression. Um, there are many open source uh, SMT solver we can uh, take into consideration. Uh, I think Z3 uh, is, uh, is the most mentioned one. Um, so, in order to do the formal verification, uh, one thing we need to do for policy is to actually construct a symbolic graph uh, to abstract the, the, the policy description for Kubernetes. So for each domain, the graph will be different. For example, if for networking, we'll be looking at something like this, uh, come and go. And for multi-tenancy, it will be something like this, right? You have a privilege escalation or de-escalation uh, from the like the the, the root to uh, many of the tenant you s you populated, and for security mostly likely you have like this type of graph. So each domain probably will have different graphs. Okay, so uh, the current discussion we are having discussion with the AWS Automated Reasoning Group. Also with folks from JP Morgan, uh, JP Morgan because banking, uh, the financial uh, industry, uh, like having the biggest requirement for the uh, formal verification. Um, so the current uh, target is to looking at the use case for privilege escalation, because pri uh, privilege escalation is useful for uh, in several use cases. Uh, for example, for the Kubernetes operator uh, lifecycle management for multi-tenancy, uh, and also like uh, in Istio, uh, like out of Kubernetes, Istio also has the problem of doing the privilege escalation or de-escalation. So if you are also interested, you can send me an email or uh, the other working group co-lead, uh, Erica, uh, to contact us. Uh, policy as a type system, um, so basically, you can view the Kubernetes policy as a like as a type uh, for your uh, whole cluster. Uh, so similar to the type uh, uh, we know for the programming language, like the integer floating point, um, the policy uh, here actually serves as a constraint. So as a type system. Um, so. Basically, a, a, a policy or Kubernetes policy defines uh, these four things. And um, so I also, I won't go into details. Um, I think one of the, uh, one of the, 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 the things that we want to emphasize is a policy different from configuration. Uh, in a way that policy expect a uh, result. So when you define a policy, you have to define the result. And uh, when a certain action is taken, uh, you know there has to be either reward or punishment for uh, for certain result. But for configuration, you don't know about the, uh, you don't expect a certain result, you just config. Um, okay, just a couple uh, examples of how, uh, like how we view policy as type system. Um, so, uh, outside of Kubernetes, we also have CNCF wide collaboration. We are part of the CNCF security seek. Um, so we are also constructing a cloud native uh, policy white paper. 
So this is the architecture we are currently having. As you can see, we, we have formal verification, policy engine, and a compiler uh, in the sense of Kubernetes CRD controller. So uh, if you are interested, you are also welcome to contribute to the white paper. OK, so uh, the best way to uh, like to, to, to contribute or uh, get in con contact with the working group is to look at the, uh, the document. Uh, we have a document for all the meeting minutes agenda. Uh, all, the, all the information is on this document. If you go on Slack, we are on uh, work group policy, or you go to the uh, Seek security channel. We are on there as well. OK. Thank you very much.